Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Have you ever heard of Learn Worlds? No, I have not. Why don't you tell me about it? Sure, let me tell you more about it. Do you want to create an income online by adding a new revenue stream to your business? It has never been easier. Consider taking your knowledge, skills, and expertise and converting it into a course that you can sell online. Sounds cool. It is really pretty cool. Learn Worlds makes it easy to create, host, and sell beautiful online courses that have an impact. Learn Worlds, intuitive platform and a wealth of resources to educate yourself. You're only a few steps away from building a thriving online business in the booming knowledge economy. Visit trylearnworlds.com forward slash free to start your 30 day free trial right now. Again, that's trylearnworlds.com forward slash free to start that 30 day trial. Sounds cool. Hey, Mike, what have you heard of the homebrew podcast? I totally have. Get it, nerds. We're hunting space dinosaurs. The homebrew podcast is the best adventure. It's published weekly and is everywhere podcasts can be found. They're veteran Dungeons and Dragons player who love phenomenal stories, endearing characters and a good adventure. They're currently engaged in a reimagined fifth edition sci-fi campaign called absurdism and a millennium abroad whether you're new to DD, a seasoned dm somewhere in between or just enjoy a good story you've come to the right place join them while they explore the universe and push the boundaries so explain to me mike what does the fifth edition mean they're using the fifth edition dungeons and dragons rule set put out by wizards of the coast catch it online today at spotify apple Podcasts, or google Podcasts. You can find them at facebook.com forward slash homebrew podcast, or you can check them out at twitter.com forward slash the homebrew DD, or again, anywhere you get your podcast feeds. Why don't you just go to https the homebrew podcast.com? Well, that would be a good idea, Mike. You can find them there also. We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio. And then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm, pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm so excited. Are we going to oh, hear this well. every time? <laughs> Are, Are you gonna... excited, Mike? Welcome to today's I'm, show. I'm never excited. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Do you know, do you know today's That's episode? Good. I broke my glasses, so I'm not excited. You, you broke your glasses? I'm yeah. sorry. How did you break your glasses? Yeah, I don't know. You don't know? I just had them on, and then I took them off, and then I put them back on, and the arm was broke. Uh-oh. So now they keep falling off. Did my you, face. As, as a kid, did you ever have to super glue your glasses? Did you have glasses? I did as a not kid? have to wear glasses until two years ago. Okay, I I had awesome vision until I turned forty five. <laughs> until you turned forty five, I'm gonna pretend it's forty five. Okay, forty five. We'll pretend it's forty five fifty. Yeah. Okay, I got you. All right. Well, welcome to Tech Time with Nathan. Mom, the show makes you go. Mm, technology news of the week. Yeah, we are here for the everyday common person with insightful segments and subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media, and we have some great topics to be talking about this what, week. Are, what are we going to talk about? Oh, let me tell you. Are we going to talk about 
Well, welcome to the show. Hang on. We got our whole little music to start out our show. Oh, yeah, so hang on. <laughs> so welcome to our show. We are live streaming in studio from 4 to 6 p.m. on YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter, and maybe Facebook if it's up. So hopefully Shh. Facebook is up right don't, now. Don't talk about so, that. Because it was not up on Monday, and it was not up last night. It was taken down again, it was taken too. taken down again. Yeah, so they had some issues with that. And so hopefully- Good thing I don't depend on Facebook. Well, uh, if you did depend on Facebook, then you're going to be having some problems. And you know what? We are so excited to be talking about Facebook because in the I'm second sure everybody's hour- everybody's talking about Facebook Oh, right boy. Now. We got inside information- from the sources inside uh, corporate headquarters of Facebook, we have some unlisted uh, individuals that are going to tell us, and uh, we've had print out information of what happened to Facebook's big breach. So we're excited about that in the second hour of Nick Espinoza on to verify some of the information that we're talking about. Uh, we got, of course, Twitch got breached a whole bunch too. So that's all. The second hour is breach, breach, breach. But on the first hour, they need we're, whiskey. That's right. The first, the first hour, we're really excited. We're coming to you from four to six p.m. If you're not listening to us on Saturday, then you're probably listening to a rebroadcast. So if you're listening to us on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, not four to six p.m. or Sunday, you listen to a rebroadcast. Go to TechTimeRadio.com again. That's TechTimeRadio.com to stay up on all the latest information. Now, if you're catching the Thursday episode. So welcome, Thursday fans. You only get the first hour. So to hear all the great stuff about Facebook, you're going to need to make sure you go online to techtimeradio.com to get that second hour because there is so much that we're going to be talking about. All right. Now, I think we should get ready to start our show. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories Uh-oh. in the first five Uh-oh. minutes. So somebody hit the wrong button. Somebody, so so, so yeah. it's supposed to be, we should have the let's start the show clip. Do you have the let's start the show clip? Look at this. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's right. The 20th now on Fox today's show. show. Now on today's show. David, are they, David, are they, I was so excited. I forgot which one to press. Okay, I was <laughs> going to say, well, yeah, we're not quite there yet. On today's show, let's talk about what we got. Hour one, why Windows 11 is destined to fail. We got Facebook <laughs> okay. and associated apps um, that were down not once but twice this week. We're going to be talking about that. We have holograms. Are they real? We have a startup company that is actually able to create a real life hologram. Did you ever used to watch the holodeck in Star Trek where they where they go on in and have that virtual room and they had a couple mystery episodes there with the holodeck always breaking down on Star Trek Next Generation? Oh, uh, sure, yeah. Okay, so there's actually a company that has real holographic processes in place. We're going to talk about it. Okay. They've been spending about 10 years doing it. They failed, 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 and it's kind of like the creation of the electricity after so many failed processes. The, the, cre- the creation of electricity. Uh, the light bulb. Okay. Sorry, creation of sorry, <laughs> creation of the light bulb after so many think, failed events. I finally, think God they got that right on the first shot. That's right. Okay, we also have Gwen that's going to be joining us on our gadgets and gears and we have our article that we did not do last week regarding EA's new COO Laura Mealy, yes. and we have a segment on and things you didn't so know. And you got so busted for yeah. that, by the way. I did, I did. I so, tried. I tried to keep them on track, folks, but yeah. sometimes that's so just we're, too we're, hard. So we have a whole segment. That's our second segment <laughs> that we're date? going I know, David's throwing me under the bus. After he hit the wrong music, yeah, now he's throwing me under the that's bus. What is it? Payback, oh, that's right. that's cool. Exactly. All right, on the second hour, we have our letters segment, which includes scam phishing emails and all-out mistruth disguised as legitimate emails yeah, sent to our host. one of those. Types on my phone. Oh, did you? Okay, we're going to have to talk about that then. That will be really exciting. And then we're going to move to Ask the Experts. We're bringing back one of our favorite guests, Nick Espinoza, the CSO and founder of Security Fanatics. He's actually on the road speaking at a large convention tomorrow, so he's going to be joining us from his hotel room. Excited about that because we've got to talk about this Facebook uh, uh, supposedly uh, con- misconfiguration, which was not a misconfiguration. It was an internal hack. It was an internal shutdown within the company itself. And we're going to be talking about that and explaining what happened on that. Rebellion. Yes. So that happened to do with the whistleblower thing. Now, I saw yeah. some other guy. Let me yeah, just tell you. If you're listening to people on the Internet, and there's some, there was some guy, a friend sent me a link, and this guy was crazy. Some like... It was a whole disguise by Facebook to do this and to give power to the. If you listen to any of those crazy oh, was people, a, was it a was it a conspiracy theory? Yeah, a conspiracy, okay. and it was actually planted by Facebook, and she purposely did it. None of that's true. No, that was the real whistleblower on sixty minutes is legit. It's somebody that came on out, and Facebook is uh, feeling a little bit of the heat from that. So we're going to be talking about that, and then um, we're going to end with some. Interesting information of what happened today in the world and tomorrow. 
we have some uh, historical history that we're going to be talking about. Some cool stuff that we have. All right. Too. I like historical uh, history. All right. So now, Mr. Gorday, we're going to get into our loaded question brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberryboost.com. Where's the Where's the sound clip? Uh, we don't have the sound clip. Oh. But, uh, we're not going to have David do any other stuff. He's, he's gotten it taken care of. He's like, no, I'm just going to do what I need to do. All right. Okay. Okay. What is the best thing about flying? Not walking. Not walking. Okay. No, I like flying. What do you do? Do you, like, do you enjoy flying? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. In in pre-COVID times, yeah. Okay. Well, we're, we're now getting out of COVID times, yep. right? Yeah. So, so, so I, for me, the best thing about flying is the amount of things that you can see through the window if you can open your window or you basically don't have somebody yelling at you to close the window. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, have you ever tried to take pictures? I, I oh try, yeah, I, try I take, to take pictures all the time. Do the, out, does out yours turn out? Mine never turn out. No, no. mine well, always they, have that. They do, but they always have a, a wing in the in the. Yeah, in the same picture. here. Yeah, they, so, so they what they need to create for the airline industry where you can actually plug in and have a camera, an HD camera in your seats for the outside it's on the tip of the wing, or or the outside of the plane, and then you could move it up and down, left or right, and you could take a picture of that. Man, I forget the that end. That would be awesome, but yeah. everybody would be trying to wrestle with that. But what if you had one for each row? Because oh, come that on, that's would, a, that, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, it's only probably like fifteen twenty bucks yeah. to have a high. That end was one camera. of the. That was one of my favorite things when I when I first came to Seattle the very first time I flew over Mount St Helens and I was like, okay. I want to be. I want to live here. That's it. Is a beautiful place. All right. Well, we're excited about it now. As we get through that, we're really excited. We're going to have, of course, our whiskey tasting for our pick of the day. We're going to have either a zero, one, or two thumbs up. We have some nice whiskey that we'll be talking about, so we're excited about that. And then now, let's get our show started with our top stories in the first five minutes. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. I get tired of you repeating that. Well, I, I just want to make sure I repeat it because I didn't know if it was going to hit the right button or we move on to the next one. Ah, just joking. All right, David. Here we go. <laughs> Windows 11 is released, but you might have to wait till mid-2022 to actually get it on your no PC. No way. Yeah, what is that about? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I see all these ads and the gals dancing all around. She goes through some portals. She goes through some art galleries. She says Windows 11 is the best thing in the world. But let me just tell you. Windows 11 is now available, but it carries some pretty strict requirements. Well, we've been we've been talking about how bad this thing is. It is horrible. So we have. We've said that it's probably not going to be very successful, and it's not. Let me just tell you. You have to load a PC Health Check app before you want to upgrade Windows 11 to see if your PC is able to be upgraded. So you have to download an app. It then tells you your PC doesn't have the requirements. I literally have nine PCs at my house, and I just got a brand new Surface, right? Uh huh. So uh, I would figure the new Surface I just bought in the store literally two months ago. So you you've already tried this? I've tried it on all <clears throat> nine of them. All nine of them fail. I can't get I can't get Windows 11 on any of my new machines. I have an i9 souped up uh, rig machine to Bitcoin uh, mine and a bunch of other aspects with that. Absolutely should. Absolutely fits the spec. 32 gigs of RAM, high-end video right, card. So doesn't upgrade. This is kind of a common thing, right? We were talking about how common this is right now, that even people who are experts can't even do this. So we can't. So Windows 11 is supposed to be coming out for most of the PCs. It's not available. Microsoft says that you might have to wait till mid-2022 to download it because they have a rolled-out process. So instead of letting everybody get Windows 11, they have some machines that they still haven't been able to fix the bugs with for this new operating system available. Mm -hmm. So they won't let you update them until they fix the bugs because they released a product that's ahead of time and it shouldn't be released are to they, the market. Are they taking a cue from the gaming industry? I think where so. They, they, they pre-release a game and it's just this really bad. It's not ready to go. It's, Windows it's, 10, when Windows 10 came out, everybody got upgraded to Windows 10. Yeah. It was easy. It was, easy. It, it was it, taken care of. The best part about Windows 11, let me just tell you that, is... That, that it's not on my PC yet. That's right. <laughs> and that I can wait till 2025 because Windows 10 will be supported until then before I even need to worry about upgrading. And you know what? I am not looking to upgrade to Windows 11 anytime soon. Okay. Well, you know, if you have an AMD processor, yeah. you're in trouble too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a very interesting <laughs> too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Your computer will not load Windows 11. <laughs> well, it'll, or it may load it. And if it does load it, it'll be running like at. Uh, yeah, it's going to be reduced performance for the Ryzen chips. Correct on Windows 11. One of the, uh, there, in fact, 
I think we actually have a, a little sound clip. Uh, do we have a sound clip for this? I don't know. I don't no. think. No, I don't think we have a sound clip for this. All right. Well, we don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's guys. fine. Well, what, okay. was that so one of the one of the big problems with, <laughs> with Windows 11 performance to fall as much as 15 percent on certain PC games, according to AMD? But they say a fix is coming. If you're running Windows 11 on an AMD Ryzen chip, brace yourself. Okay. Chipmaker support document indicates that all AMD processors are officially compatible with Windows 11 are affected officially compatible with Windows 11. So, so that means essentially every AMD chip that's out there yeah. has a level 3 cache that's built into the chip. Uh, to run Windows 11... Yeah, I was fixing to talk about that. Okay. So, <laughs> okay you, you're going to be running at a reduced speed. So what is that? How can you release Windows 11 to market? I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this was a faux pas on Microsoft's part that they, they jumped the gun a little bit on this. Yeah, why? Why do you have to release an operating system when it, originally it came on out that Windows 10 was going to be the last operating system? All right, so tell me more. Yeah, what happened with that? What what, what I, happened with that? Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft said Windows 10 was the last. You'd only right. have to pay for upgrades. So you have Windows 11 doesn't work for AMD processors. Windows 11 doesn't work for a brand new Surface that you buy from them, right? So it may be able to be upgraded you, in 2022. Do you, do you have an opinion on this about Windows 11? Yeah, Windows 11 sucks. So no, do no, not, no, uh, no, 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 not about it being suck, but do you think it's actually going to, you think they'll back down like they did with 8.1? Um, so I think Windows 11 is doomed. I think Windows will come out with some new number, probably not 12. Windows 13. Or, well, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Windows yeah. 13. Yeah. <laughs> everything's backwards or everything's cycle. You you move your mouse across and like the 13, then it moves to the left automatically. No. Mine does that anyway. Oh, does it do yeah. that? All right. All right. <laughs> so, yes. Um, let's talk about holograms. Okay, let's talk about holograms. Do you want to talk about holograms or do you want me to talk no, about No, you talk about it. Okay, you were so the one that was really excited. I am. So holograms get real. Startup creates objects of light out of thin air. No longer do you, are you like are oh there goes the the five fingers all right no yep. longer are you relegated to science fiction holodeck style operations from Silicon Valley company Lightfield let me tell you if you have a chance to buy stock in Lightfield go out and buy Lightfield right now labs are here today essentially what they've done is they have <laughs> choose what's that keep going <laughs> what, what they uh, have, you're giving you're giving financial advice you're not allowed to give okay I'm giving financial advice go buy so, stocks. <laughs> Right now into Lightfield, because if they create a hologram, they're going to be worth billions of dollars. So let me just tell you, I, I, what they've been able to do is they have the way where they can focus light on a specific tablet. So you have to have one of their tablets. And it is different yeah. because uh, 4K televisions have 8.2 million pixels. This tablet that they have right there is a 20-inch digital panel that has 2.5 billion pixels. So it has so many pixels on this tablet that what they do is they focus light out of these pixels mm -hmm. into a triangular type process. And what it does is above that tablet, it can produce a Princess is, Leia hologram. This is, yeah, do, this is the this is the Star Wars thing where they where it comes up out of the Yeah, like you see the playing chess. Device. Remember playing chess on the yeah. Millennium Falcon or whatever that chess game was? This is exactly Dude, the you ability. Are so, you are so Abusing your nerd card. Right well, okay, now. what was it? What? Yeah, you know it the was name? the Millennium Falcon. It was the Millennium Falcon. That's what yeah. I said. Did I say Millennium Falcon? <laughs> what did I say? You said or something. Oh, did I? Okay, so the chess game that they played. You know when they have yeah. Chewbacca gets all upset. So essentially, this is doing the same exact deal where it's coming up and <laughs> Chewbacca's who gets upset. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep messing with what you. What are you right? talking about? That's who he's playing. <laughs> Chewbacca gets all upset. He pounds the deal. All right, so let me just tell you the way that it works is the hologram beam comes up in a triangular area. Mm -hmm. It is so bright that it can distinguish between all the different rays that are coming up and make the object itself. Awesome. All right, story number four, breaking news. Friday evening, Facebook has apologized once again for reporting problems down with the services. Dang. Days after a major outage on WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook on Monday, they were again down on Friday for many hours. The company said a configuration change had impacted users globally. Well, this is the second time you used the same exact they wording, so it's word. cut and paste. Well, this is corporate. This is corporate. Cut and spin. paste. Hey, we had a configuration issue. Yeah, uh-huh, sure. Okay, we're, we're going to be talking about this more in the second hour, but sorry if you were unable to access the products during the last couple hours on Friday. They said in a statement, we are going to work to rectify that, and we'll fix our issue as soon as possible. Was it out longer than it was on Monday? It was only two hours. Oh, okay. But it was down two hours. 
and had degraded service specifically for Instagram. It was really I, tagging. I suppose if I cared more, I would have known that. Well, because I, I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Well, I I, I, acci- on- I accidentally stumbled upon the fact that Facebook was out on Monday because I got a tweet. You you, te- you texted me too. I know. I was like, "Hey, yeah. what's going on here?" I know, and I said, uh, "This is funny. I said, it's being hacked on." And I, yeah. That's what I said. And we're gonna be talking about that the second hour. So, hey, we are gonna need to go to a commercial break here. It is four twenty three already, man. We are getting through the hour quickly. We got Gwen on the line that's waiting to talk about it. But when we come on back, we have our segment: uh, things you didn't know, or stories you didn't know that we're gonna be taking a look <clears throat> at. EA's COO. Laura Mealy. So you're listening to Tech Time Radio. I'm Nathan Mom. We got Mike Roday here and David Brown behind the board. We'll see you after the commercial break. Hi, I'm Nathan Mum, host of Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum on KKNW. Tech Time Radio's live show is Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. And you can always check us on the web at techtimeradio.com. Our segmented stylized radio gives you the breaking news before it hits mainstream media. Join myself and Mike Rodea as we'll make you laugh. That's good. So, like, hooked on phonics worked for you, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. And learning something new in technology, join us Saturdays, 4 to 6 p.m. and Thursdays from 6 to 7 a.m. The technology show for the everyday common person. Hi, this is Lisa Downs, host of Reigniting You, the show that takes a positive, forward-looking approach to mid-to-late career transitions for Gen Xers and Boomers every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock Pacific. Whether you're looking to stay in the traditional workforce, do your own thing, or retire or semi-retire, Reigniting You is your source for career transition advice, inspiration, and insight for what's next in your career and life. Join me Wednesdays at 3 o'clock to get re-energized, recharged, and reignited. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We just had our first whiskey tasting, and we're going to start our whiskey review here. Mike, what do you think of this? This is the WL Weller Special Reserve Straight Bourbon. It's $125 a bottle, mm-hmm. 90 proof, aged for approximately seven years. This bourbon is crafted from wheat mash bill. Let's tell you a little bit about this. Notably, W.L. Weller is a wheat bourbon originally created by the Seltzer Willer Distilling Company. The brand is named after William Laurel, who was the original created and credited individual to create the wheat and second grain straight bourbon as opposed to the more commonly used rye. Mm-hmm. Notably, William hired a famous Julian Van Winkle, who would be later known as Pappy. Van Winkle began his career working for Weller. Weller passed in 1889 and accidentally essentially moved him on to have Julian Pappy Van Winkle create his own product. Yeah. So Pappy Van Winkle is a pretty large known uh, whiskey in the area. So he essentially worked here. He must have stolen Weller's information on how to make whiskey because this is a very I like this very this smooth taste. Very smooth. I can I can actually taste the the fruity flavors. You can? Mm-hmm. So you got the uh, I think there's some orange in there. I mm-hmm. think there's some uh, uh vanilla flavoring, cinnamon flavoring too, supposedly. Yep. Okay, great. All right. Well, now that we got our drinks out of the way, we're not going to say if we're going to give a thumbs up or thumbs down. You didn't like last week, so so last week's were the kinda, Duke. Yeah, you didn't like the John Wayne Duke. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, it was. It was. Again, it was okay. It just wasn't okay enough. Dude, this is really smooth, man. This I, one's I, good. I, I, I'm still relaxing in it. It's kind of going down. It has a nice little burn, but it's not like a bad burn. It's just a kind of nice, a warm, a little warm, fuzzy tummy. Uh, two hours of this, we're going to be in trouble. All right, here yep. we go. We're going to start our next segment right now. Stories you didn't know. All right. EA promoted Lori Mealy to COO, making her the most powerful woman in gaming. She previously served as a chief studio officer for the now Electronic Arts and has been promoted to the chief operating officer the company announced last week. The change is a big promotion for Mealy, who had already had a significant leadership at the company, overseeing 25 different studios. The new role will give Mealy greater insight over the company and arguably makes her the most powerful woman in gaming industry. Oversight. Um, there are very few females that are in the C-suite, especially those of uh, decision-making processes, not including a C-suite executive of mostly HR and finance individuals, 
that are female. So she actually takes on a lead role. It's not like a controller or a financial person. It's not like the HR person. Right. She is making the decisions for Electronic Arts. Now, Mealy joined EA in 1996 and has served as a chief studio officer since April 2018. Uh, speaking with Mealy in July, where she discussed a pandemic has changed the development at EA. Mealy has now moved on to the role uh, in the last few months, according to SEC filings. Laura has also led EA's America's publishing organization, overseeing EA's products and marketing campaigns in the region. Additionally, Laura served as the general manager of the Star Wars business and senior vice president of global marketing, working for EA, developing teams, overseeing packaged goods and digital releases. Her leadership and work on platform franchises such as Battlefield, Dragon Age, and Need for Speed contributed to Laura's recognition and the women's all-time ad age watch list. All right, we have a short interview here with EA's COO, Laura Mealy, and she reveals how the company is using employee resource groups to review their games. So I've been at Electronic Arts for close to 24 years, and I've had the privilege of having many roles at the company. And, um, and we bring games such as EA Sports, Battlefield, The Sims, Plants vs. Zombies to life, and um, it's just a real privilege to work in this organization. And you know, we exist to inspire the world to play. And when you are in the business of inspiring the world, it means the world. And you, um, you need to ensure that you have diverse and inclusive content for everyone to play and for everyone to connect with. I have actually always been a gamer, from board games to my computer lab. I used to beg my parents for family game nights every week. We put a game out called Need for Speed Heat. It takes place in a city that's very Miami-esque. And we wanted um, really rich flavors of the Hispanic and Latino community represented. And so we have a Somos ERG, and we had them review clothes and language and colors of cars and so we were we were very specific on that group and of course there's intersectionality and our women's ERG participated as well but we were really focused on ensuring that, that we represented this community in a way that we wanted to in a way that was relevant and resonated with them and certain categories and genres are certainly um, a higher male um, portion of players and so I'm, I'm hoping that we can also um, help players think differently about it. I think that having inclusive and diverse characters or diverse characters, people see themselves in games and are more open to actually playing them and experiencing them. And I just have to believe that the more diverse our players are, that the better that will get, that the better that will be. All right. So let's talk about what's the one of the very first things that she did when she got promoted to the studio chief of electronic arts. Now, I'm a big electronic arts guy, so I play uh, Madden football, right? Mm -hmm. And Madden football was fantastic back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Mm -hmm. Then it went through a real time where it wasn't really good, and there was another sporting game company called 2K Sports, which actually ended up becoming a, a much better product. And EA was kind of just sitting in the background, not doing very well at that. And so one of the biggest things that EA has has been accused of by gamers is that they really don't listen to people and they make what they want and they put out what they want, but they don't actually get feedback from individuals and change and, and make things that are needed to be successful. Yeah, I remember <coughs> Battlefront 2 coming out and there was a big uproar about uh, that. About the, the pay for content the, stuff? The pay for content stuff, yeah. So so let's let's take a look. First thing she did when she became the chief studio officer was that she pulled together 19 video game influencers into a conference room. Mm -hmm. She asked them, uh, what, what do you want to change? What is something that frustrates you about electronic cards? A guy in the corner at the table said, I don't understand why you don't give players what they're asking for. And essentially, this individual went on to talk for about 10, 15 minutes and said, hey, well, we've asked for this, we've asked for this upgrades, we've asked for this, and you guys don't do any of that. Instead, you guys push up your uh, to-purchase content, your play-to-win content. And so she took this very seriously. And essentially, she went on in and she decided to change how not only um, they've done uh, marketing, for games themselves, but also change the feedback loop for it. So she created subgroups within electronic arts, a female group, a Latino group, and certain area groups that when they actually build a game 
uh, across platforms. They actually bring in these people from HR, from marketing, from other areas and say, okay, here's the game that's playing here. We want you to take it home and we want you to tell us about it. And then she takes that feedback in from just normal users to actually change how they develop the games themselves. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Uh, She attended the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Uh, She worked at an architectural company, and essentially she started out as a receptionist in positions before she became more senior roles. Essentially, she landed a job as a project manager at Westwood Studios, a video game developer best known for Command & Conquer in 1996. And then she eventually took over all the marketing for the parent company, Virgin Interactive. Wow. Um, essentially, her big break came in EA's business in 2011. About 80% of the advertising budgets were spent on TV ads. But she saw how the advertising budgets should have been going to online and interactive processes. And she spent over 80% of the budget for Battlefield 3 on digital advertising content. So instead of doing big billboards, instead of doing anything that was a traditional marketing aspect for Battlefield 3, she mm-hmm. decided to do it all in-game. So if you're watching YouTube, you would see a Battlefield 3 ad. If you were watching uh, any uh, networking event that was any streaming uh, information, Battlefield 3 was a big idea. Essentially, she was so scared about this, she got called in by EA and said, why are you not... Uh, spending in traditional advertising. She said, I think this, this is going to be a new way to do. The executives came into work, said that we did not see it on the billboards. Yeah. And she got called in front of the car. Of course. She said, I believe this strategy will work. And what she ended up having, she had EA's fastest selling game of all time with 5 million copies sold in the first week with this new marketing strategy. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we don't we don't like change, so... So she is she is a groundbreaking video game nerd. She plays the video games. She uh, uh, goes in and she'll spend anywhere between 20 to 40 hours a week playing video games. Really? She talks about how uh, she originally started with men avatars uh, because all of the female avatars were over-sexualized and, mm-hmm. and they're always trying to be that. And so she's made a big push for any of the online playing games, any of the games that you could create a person themselves to be less sexualized and to be more uh, standard process of your everyday player. Okay. So now we, we play a game called uh, Sea of Thieves. Yep. So I like. So this is, in there they have uh, certain models, but if you look at most of the models that they have there, there are not overly uh, sexy gals. There's not really overly uh, beefy dudes. Beefy dudes. I mean, my poor character I play, I mean, he's got like a little yeah, pot belly. Yeah, he's he's porky. Yeah, he is. So he's running around. It looks like a pretty cool pirate. They've spent a lot of time, I know Rare has, to make sure that they're more real inclusive and it probably looks a little bit more like me than some big buff dude that would be going out there <laughs> type of deal. So we're, we're okay. excited to have her be the COO. He doesn't have a dad bod. Was that no? Is it, it, my guy has a little. Your dad guy, your get your your it, guy has a dad. Body. He does a little bit. All right. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that segment. Hopefully you got to learn a little bit more about Electronic Arts. He was really revolutionary in the gaming world. Uh, you, they do a lot of online tournaments. You wouldn't want to be playing an online tournament on Windows 11 on an AMD processor, though, because if no, you are, you're, you're going to be at a reduced speed. That's right. You're going to you're gonna suck. <laughs> you're going to be very slow. So we're going to take a commercial back. When we come on back, we have Gwen Wade joining us, our producer, and, of course, our gadgets and gear expert. We're going to see, um, is this gadget and gear item that Gwen's going to share with me something that I should add to my Christmas list or not, or for your Christmas lists? Uh, again, it's a Kickstarter project, so it probably won't be available until next Christmas. But we're going to be talking about 2020, that. 2025. That, that's right. And we got tons more on our show. So we'll see you right after the commercial break. I'm Nathan Mum. We got Micro Day here, David Brown behind the board, and Gwen Way will be joining us in our next segment. Did you know that up to 12 to 15 percent of Americans grind their teeth at night while they sleep? Hmm. Yeah, it's it's called bruxism. I used to work at a sleep lab, and we used to we used to measure that, and it leads to a lot of uh, problems like headaches and destroys your teeth. It wears down the enamel, and it's just very hard on your your mouth. So every once in a while, I'll wake up, my jaw will hurt. Do you think that I'm grinding my teeth at night? 
Yeah. Well, so how do you go about protecting this then? Uh, the number one recommended way of protecting yourself from teeth grinding is what's called a night guard, which is a custom fitted prosthetic that you put inside your mouth. It usually runs, you know, hundreds of dollars, but I know our sponsor, Smile Brilliant, can get you custom fitted night guards for as little as $45 a piece. So if you go to smilebrilliant.com and use Tech Time Radio at checkout, you can receive 20% off your complete order. So visit smilebrilliant.com and use the Tech Time Radio at checkout code. All right. Welcome back to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Speaking of breaking news, I heard you got some uh, very instant feedback during that last commercial oh, break. Oh, we did. We had some uh, thanks to our viewers on Twitch and on uh, Facebook. It is working right now, so thank you very much. We did have some uh, information where someone said that it made it sound like I was saying that Julian Pappy Van Winkle stole his ideas from the Weller family. Now, I was not trying to say that. What I was trying to say is that I'm sure he worked with the Weller family that we're drinking here. As you would work at any company, he probably Put learned- Put on the back of, boop, boop. So we, yeah, we, he probably learned some secrets, and that helped him produce his Pappy Van Winkle, which is a very which is, good which is a very good uh, whiskey. Yeah, this is a good whiskey. So uh, that's what I'm trying to say. So Pappy- um, he's probably rolling over in his grave saying, well, how dare Nathan say that? No, I'm, I'm not trying to say that that was the case. I'm absolutely saying that you <laughs> had a great opportunity and you okay. know what? Okay. There Let's move on. Okay. So <laughs> how was your taste though? I'll tell you the taste is phenomenal. Taste is good. You know what? We're going to have a little bit of this in the second hour too. We're going to be, uh, uh, we're going to have to stay an extra couple of minutes, uh, before we drive back into our vehicles. Cause this mm-hmm. has got some, pretty- you can stay here and keep me company all night if you want. That's right. I, that, that'll be fantastic. I'll stay here and hang out with David. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to our next segment now. What's new in our gadgets and gear. All right. Well, joining the show, of course, we have our producer and export uh, extraordinaire Gwen Way is joining us. Gwen, how are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. It's a beautiful, cloudy, gray fall day here in the Pacific Northwest. It so is. It is. You gotta know what? Love it. This. This is the. This is are the. Are you what, a pluvial file? What, what is? What's a pluvial file? Not really. That's someone who loves rain. Oh, I don't love rain. This is the gray. Well, this is the beginning of the gray. It's not as bad though when you get January and February, and then every day you wake out and it's just always gray. That's like. Oh yeah, that's like the depressing that, times of Washington. Yeah, that's that's, that's the, why I'm very happy that we're we're getting to a point where there's more people vaccinated and we can travel again because our, our we would normally travel in February. Yeah, to go somewhere sunny and and feel the sun again. It's yeah, great. Yeah, no, I got to do that February. Go down to California or or yeah. or, or Arizona. I can go to Arizona. Arizona. That's, that's right. right. Go down to Arizona, Arizona and hang go. out there and have a great time. All right, well, Gwen. We're excited to have it's you. 90 degrees in Texas right now. Is it really? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, everybody's moving to Texas, aren't they? That's what I yeah. keep on hearing. Okay. All right. Um, let's talk about this product. So this is an interesting product. We had this at the production show. I did a little bit more research about it. So I'm going to let you talk all about it. This is called the Splay, right? It's called mm-hmm. uh, S-P-L-A-Y. Splay display. That's right. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about this. Well, it would be absolutely perfect for your sleepover with David there in the studio. Okay, when we stay uh, here tonight. We're not going to okay. do each other's hair? <laughs> no, we're not going to do each other's nails a little bit later tonight? <laughs> no, we'll just be running around the building checking all the other stations here all night. Okay, there you, you play go. hide I and seek. that also works. Yeah. yeah, there you go. But in between those checks, you could use the Splay display to either work off your computer with a spare monitor or set it up as an ultra short throw projector. So you'd be able to watch a movie. Okay, so this is a projector unit. It's considered exactly. a Pico projector unit. Are you going to bring it up online so we can see it? Are you going to share that out on your screen or not? Uh, it is shared if David okay. wants to go ahead and throw it up. There, there it is right there. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Okay. So it's an expandable display, ultra show throw Pico projector. Now, I had to look up what Pico projector is. Do you know what Pico projector means? It's a Pokemon reference? No. that's no. what. See, that's what I thought. <laughs> Pico means that he can hold the projector in your hand. Oh, okay. So essentially, this projector- So it is a Pokemon reference. Well, a little bit. So essentially, <laughs> you can- Ideally, this projector 
is portable. You mm-hmm. don't have to have a special case for it. You can just wrap it, put it in your laptop bag, and take it with you. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit of, more about this because I was I said I wasn't going to buy one of these, and then I did a little bit more research, and now I was like, well, I should buy one of these. And yeah, I was like, you well, always no. buy these. Things. Well, this is every very, time. I know this is very interesting. So tell tell me what this does. It ex- kind of is a, it expands. It could be used as a second monitor. Go and tell us a little bit more, Glenn. Exactly. So basically, this is a collapsible monitor. Uh, And what I mean by that is it collapses the screen that the projector throws the image onto. Uh, It's got a speaker. Now, the display is not uh, necessarily 4K. It is not. It is is only standard. It is standard 1K compatible, not 4K or 2K. Okay. Exactly. But when you look at the 4K ultra short throw projectors, you're looking at spending 1500 on the low end up to three or 4000 on the high end. Okay. And this beauty you can get for $700. For $700. And it has this portable pack. So it's kind of like a transformer. So you like expand it and it's got this cloth type deal. I actually thought it was like one of those deals where if you ever went to like JCPenney's as a kid and they had those big white deals that they would uh, do for your photo projector. It kind of has like that white background, that kind of that screen area, but essentially it shoots the video onto that white screen itself, this portable white screen. Oh, okay. Okay. Exactly. All right. Tell us, tell us a little bit more. I'm still still on the, I'm still on the fence on, on, on if I'm going to, to uh, no, back this or not? No, you're not. Well, I can't. Well, you're not. You already <laughs> backed it. Okay, so there's some uniqueness to this, right? What 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 other uniqueness comes from this? There's quite a few bits of uniqueness. First of all, it includes speakers, which is excellent. Uh, it is has a four hour battery life. Four hours, fantastic. So that uh, means when you're and, not plugging it in. So if I take it outside, that means okay. one. Two two regular movies or one Lord of the Rings ex- extended edition. That's exactly, exactly. right. That's but right. Only one, so you have to be ready to recharge for the other two. Okay, uh, which is good. That gives you a chance to you know get up, stretch your legs, say hello to a loved one. I don't know, eat really? something, and fast? then dive right back in. <laughs> is it a fast charging system? <laughs> so it is a so it is a fast charge. It'll charge within mm-hmm. thirty five minutes. Exactly. Wow, that's a long hello to friends. What do you mean? It, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're gonna eat too, aren't you gonna eat? Exactly. No, you Come eat on. while you're watching the movie. Uh, Come on. What? No, you, no. Yeah, you really? eat while you're watching you the movie. You can eat something more than popcorn, Mike. Come on. Oh yeah. No, yeah. I'm talking about a full course meal. Right? You have a full yeah, course meal right there while you're eating, oh, while, wow. while okay. you're watching. All right. Okay. Keep on going. All right. Here we go. <laughs> All right. The other wonderful thing about this is that the battery bank can act as a battery bank for anything. So you can actually. Uh, Watch a two-hour movie and then plug your phone in and charge your phone if you need to. Aha, uh-huh, see? So if you want to charge your phone and your battery's dead, you could be watching The Lord of the Rings and you probably only get through the final battle and then it'll it'll, it'll be yeah, out yeah, of Yeah, you're not watching yeah. Lord of the Rings and charging your phone. It just, that's <laughs> no. not going to happen. No. no. no you're, you're, you're going gonna... to watch, watch one of those 90-minute shows like... <laughs> um, what? It's a, a standard okay. movie. Okay, a standard length movie. Or Free Guy. Uh, We're going to be talking about Free Guy. Have you uh, seen Free Guy yet? I haven't seen that yet. Oh, Free guy is, is it fun? It's, it's funny. so good. It's very funny. It's so good. Ryan, Ryan, and so Ryan the very, Reynolds, very Ryan, last scene. Ryan Reynolds movies are on my top shelf. Uh, so the, the, I love oh, Ryan yeah. Reynolds uh, This movies. is a great one. He, he's, he's one of the funniest guys ever. So the end Dead, scene, Deadpool is the very the end scene, I don't want to ruin it for you, but I could only see Mark Zuckerberg Monday morning going on in and repeating the Free Guy end scene. That's all I'll say. When I think of Facebook being down for those seven hours that it was down Monday, there's an well, end now scene. I have to watch it. Yeah, there's an end scene yep. there. And I, 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 I don't you agree, Gwen? That that's probably oh, what he's doing. Absolutely. That's right. No, okay, never mind. That's all I'll say. <laughs> all right. Okay. Okay. All right. So so this has speakers, and I heard the speakers mm-hmm. are actually really good. They're according, good speakers. According yeah. to the deal, it's full <laughs> HD. It's not 2K. It's not 4K, but it's a full HD resolution. Plugs in with an HDMI cable to any source. It can actually also be used as a second it's, monitor. Yep, it's a mm. monitor. So you could use it as a monitor. So if I have my, if so I, have, I can, I can have my monitor here, and I can have a screen projected monitor here. Yes, and when you plug into this HDMI aspect, it will actually allow you to drag and drop your computer, both Mac and PC, 
available to go left and right and have that as an additional screen. Well, that's cool. And also, I mean, if it comes right down to it, when we get back to traveling, you can uh, just kind of spread out and work. That's right. You could be on the plane. You put up this little Pico deal. Yeah. You, get, I, I, you could I be can, watching I, a movie. Yeah. And then the person next to you be like, why the heck are you taking up that whole uh, tray? <laughs> and you'd be like, because I love flying. Because that's what Mike said. What's the best thing about exactly, flying? You, exactly. You, you could have one of these Pico displays there. No, I said looking out the you window. Watch a movie oh, you with me? That's right. You know, Look, you can make friends with the people next to you. It'll be fine. No, I, that's, I don't do that on flights. Are you, are you, are you <laughs> just a quiet dude and you don't talk to I'm me? I'm an introvert. Okay. You don't if talk I, to me? If I don't talk to somebody on a, one person at all, yeah. I'm a happy guy. Oh, I need to know. Every, I need to know everybody I in my row. I need to know where to. they work, what they're doing. Yeah, I, and... I don't know. Okay, all right. I've had some interesting <laughs> conversations that I was never really involved in. <laughs> well, really, you just yeah. listening? Fair. You're People, just listening. You're just listening. You're just listening. Okay. Just nod. Just, just nod. Smile and nod. All right. So how? So so the Kickstarter. How long until this is uh, funded? Is it fully funded? How do I go and search for this on Kickstarter? Uh, let's talk about well, those things. The easiest way to search for it is to just search for Splay Display. Okay. Uh, you definitely want to add the display in there because right now there's also a Splay uh, project that involves children's shoes. Okay. Wow. So the two people decide to name something Splay. Exactly. Uh, well, that's, that's a that's S-play a Splay and Splay. Oh, okay, I get you. Splay is Splay is you know. Splay. Splay is uh you, you move, spread is spread out spreading out. Okay. S play would be something kids would do. Okay. Okay. And kids I get play you. too. So S play display is what you want to search on. Yeah. Uh, has it been fully funded yet? Uh, let me get back up to the top. I believe it has. I believe it, it has was to. just getting to that point. Uh, and yes, yes, it has. You still have a little bit of time to to make up your decision. Okay. So you can Nathan. still. And how much is how much is the unit itself? If I want one unit. If you want one unit, it's seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Uh, and when the plan is when this becomes available to the general public, yep, uh, they're going to be selling these for fourteen hundred. For fourteen hundred. So, and they've already raised one hundred and ninety-two thousand five hundred sixty-eight bucks. Exactly out of a ten thousand uh, goal. So Did, they've they're good to go. You've got just over three weeks. Just so and. and when is the expected delivery date? Twenty twenty five. So just about time Windows ten is that's no right. longer needed. That's I right. have to go to Windows exactly. eleven. Exactly. That's right. When Windows eleven is is released fully. Um, <laughs> no, they say that they're going to get it to you by early to mid next year. Okay. I, I think your goal of Christmas twenty twenty two is probably closer with all of the supply chain issues that are going on that makes sense i'm still waiting for my uh boxing stuff that you're i waiting did. for you're waiting for 60 percent of, of the stuff you bought I in know. 2020 i did finally get one of my uh deals where i had the hdmi to display for oh, yeah. uh, ipads so i have that that the display here and i have that on my laptop so mm-hmm. i actually use Good. that but yeah, this, this, they take your money and then they wait and they keep on giving you updates monthly. About, oh, we're almost yeah, there. Nice. We're almost there. I, yeah, I got the power there. bank too, the really nice one that I uh, actually it was the first gadgets and gear that I did. Yes, you did. You, you actually yeah. got it already. I got it already. Wow! And how's it working? But you're, that was for I, your traveling, though, right? It was for traveling. We actually, uh, my husband and I went to Hawaii last okay. month. Okay. Uh, he works for a Hawaii-based company. They flew him out to. Uh, meet a couple of people and I just kind of tagged along. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, right. and that sounds like a rough life. Your poor I know, accountant it was, it was husband. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's a horrible <laughs> life. Okay. All right. But yeah, we used it on the plane and it was great. And it worked as expected. As it's a hard expected. luck life, is it? Yeah, that's a hard, hard life. Yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. It's a hard life to go out to <laughs> hard Hawaii. Hard luck life. That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is available again it's called the S play. The S play. S P L A Y is supposed to sound like display. It's available. It's a, a portable unit you can pop up. So if you have a Jeep in the middle of nowhere and you want to watch a movie, you can pop you can that out it. in the middle of no man's land. You could have a rechargeable unit from one of other Gwen's type of deal where you could recharge this unit. So then you could watch something to display on another Kickstarter project. Yeah, so glamping, can... glamping yeah. 2.0. That's right. All right. Exactly. Now we just need the indoor plumbing. That's right. That would be yeah, perfect. You can't port it. You can't. That's not portable. Uh, that's not portable. Yeah. What's what? You know what? That would be a gadgets and gear thing. Yeah. 
portable. You, you just that would be you, you plug it right into like an outlet. A, a plug have... and play toilet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It, yeah. If I ever see it on there, you better believe that that is going to be the next play. one. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, okay. Okay. And we'll yeah. see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Gwen, thank you very much for joining the show. Have a great afternoon. You too. Thank you. All right. That was our extraordinary Gwen Way. Of course, uh, we love her every Thursday. She is a part of our show. We have a g- large group of individuals that join us Thursday nights. And we spend a lot of time uh, going through our news stories and uh, doing commercials. We, that's our commercial night. That's our commercial. That's, our, that's all right. Okay. Well, that's we're going to record that I'm really excited. That's right. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have Mike's mesmerizing moment brought to us by Story Coffee and Pick of the Day. Uh, this has been a great hour, and we're almost halfway done with the show. So we'll see you right after this break. And thank you for watching. Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that eight-ounce size. It's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry, that's E-L-D-E-R-B-E-R-R-Y-Boost.com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers. After searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup, none could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. Did you lose your mind when Facebook went offline on Monday? Uh, no, because I actually, cause we did, we did the prep show member on, on Saturday about the 60 mm-hmm. minutes. So I expected something to happen and, um, a yeah. lot of people lost their mind. They did. They did a lot. Of, and some of it, some of it is, is, you know, people have businesses that they run through Facebook. So that's yep. loss of profit. But a lot of people lost their mind who really don't. They couldn't p- take a they, picture of their uh, meal and, right. and post it on Facebook. Right. Right. So this is one of the interesting things about. Do you know why? No. Why? 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 Why do we care so much when Facebook's down that we're supposed to have this and we need to 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 have it up and going for us? Th- this is this is a panic response, and we can we can say that this is very like addiction, okay. because it is. Facebook Facebook has been has been well, all social media has been linked to addiction because we get a lot of. Uh, dopamine shots from engaging on Facebook and it it draws us in and they actually use that for their platforms uh sustainability right yep. they're trying to get you to do that so when the when the the service goes off blam you're suddenly in in withdrawal and you don't know what to do yeah you have to socialize and talk to people right. individually and this is connected to FOMO which is fear of missing out okay and it's connected to addictive processes and and other Human behavior issues that we have as part of as part of our daily routines. If we if we are knocked out of our routine, it's common for us to get anxious and things like that. So, do you ever think there's going to be a social media groups like an AAA group where it'll be like an AAS group for social? No, media? I'm sure they're already. I'm sure there already are. Really, there are gaming. There are twelve uh, step programs for gamers. Okay, um, things like that. There's the this is the the way we interact with technology is so foreign to our biological processes that it we often don't know what happens but Facebook being one of them has has taken advantage of that of that addictive process and as the whistleblower talked about on 60 minutes and yeah and and, and then yeah. once that service is knocked out you start to have withdrawals and you start to panic and so these people are just losing their minds and they probably aren't really cognizant of why 
It's it's crazy. Yeah, you know, as, as we were talking about in our staff meeting, like me and you weren't really affected by Facebook. No. Right? So we were like, eh, okay, it was like down. Whatever, right? yeah. yeah, who cared? But our younger, we have a lot of uh, under 27-year-olds that are a part of our show. I mean, that's like a big deal, especially Instagram, yeah. right? For gals, gals, Instagram is like it. And so it was like Instagram was offline. I couldn't post a picture. I couldn't do a social media thing. It was just crazy. Mm-hmm. All right, well, let's talk about now our... Uh, uh, Weller Special Reserve Straight Bourbon, $125 a bottle, 90 proof. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up from Mike. Thumbs up. Thumbs up from Nathan. We have two thumbs up for Very our whiskey. Good. It was fantastic. Now, for those that are listening on the first hour and they're saying, hey, you know what? I don't know what's going to happen. Our second hour is coming up. You want to join us because we have Nick Espinoza, the CSO of Security Fanatics, will be joining us. We're going to be talking about the Facebook. It was down twice this week. We actually have the insider information. Join us and our letters segment. I'm Nathan Mum, Microday, David Brown. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.